Hello there. So um, I wanted to take a look at the different ways that we could make a color image into black and white, considering all the different ways that we have to do it now. So I'm going to start off with raw therapy, which is also um, my raw developer. Then I'm going to try GIMP's GAMIC or GAMIC add-on. That'll be the next video. And finally, the biggest thing that made me want to try this was that Google has released their Nick collection, so I'm going to try it on there. To make it a fair comparison of the black and white conversion, uh, what I'm going to do is take this image, I'm going to spend a little bit of time developing it to a nice color image, and then I'm going to export a TIF, and I'm going to use the TIFF in GIMP and the Nick collection uh, as the starting point. So everyone will have the same starting point, and then we won't have to see, or there won't be um, changes based on Photoshop's raw editor or um, GIMP's raw editor. And so um, this is a shot that I did of my daughter today. Um, I did a really, really quick shot with a beauty dish to the right of her. Um, her left side of her face is a little bit overexposed, and um, I was just trying to do a really quick um, image where I could have some contrast in the image that would make it for a good black and white. Um, if I had taken the time to do this well, then I would have uh, made sure to not overexpose her face and use um, something on the left side, uh, another flash or a reflector or something to keep it from going completely dark, uh, unless that was the look I was going for, but clearly in this type of setting, that's not what I was looking for. So I was at F8. 1 over 60 seconds, ISO 100, and 40 millimeters. So I'm going to turn this off so we can see the entire image basically. And I go there. There we go. So here's the light up here. And um, I'm not going to worry about cropping it. Uh, normally I would probably crop it about here, which would get rid of the light source. I kind of like the glow in it. At least I want to see what it's going to look like in black and white. <coughs> now you might be wondering, why do we want to um, worry about getting a good color photo first. Well, um, technically, if you're just going to do it in your raw developer, like raw therapy, it doesn't matter as much as it does uh, otherwise. But it actually can matter because there's there's two um, two of the better ways to make a black and white image here are going to depend. Uh, there's two ways, and one of them depends on how well it looks in color. Uh, and then finally, depending on how it looks in color is going to determine how GIMP and how the Nick collection interpret the colors that they're going to convert into black and white. Uh, which, of course, is not really black and white, it's more of a grayscale gradation, right? So um, I did a little bit of editing um, before I started this video, just brought back some of the highlights that I'd blown here. Um, brought back the exposure just a little bit from where their auto levels wanted to put it. Um, just for reference purposes, this would be a completely zeroed out photo, which uh, you know tends to be kind of a flat photo. Uh, and you can see it's way to the left over here. Uh, so I, you know, they tend to have pretty good, um, pretty good settings here. Although the closer you are to a properly exposed image, the better it'll be when you first load into raw therapy. Now you could say that if you come here, there's some more detail, but it's like I said, I don't want to start from there. I want to start from here. So the first thing I would try is doing a tone curve up here. And so I go to custom and I go to film like, and you can see here that we're not going all the way left and we have a little bit to go um, to the right if we want a full um, tonal range for our photo. So let's try that and see what happens. And then usually what I do is if this doesn't give me something pleasing, then I will drop here to the lab space and do the lab adjustments because the, the L curve, the lightness curve, doesn't affect the colors while this one here does affect the colors, but it's meant to do it in a way that's similar to the way film did and similar to the way that our eyes like to see things. So let's take a look and see. So I'll start here, kind of move it to the left. There we go. 
And then I'll come over here, move the curve to the right, and that gives us a more contrasty image. Let me take a look at the, my midtones here. Maybe, maybe do something a little like that. Mm, that's okay. Let me make a snapshot. Let me come back. So you see we've lost a lot of our contrast. Let's see what I would do here with the lab space. I'm going to avoid color shift. I'm going to protect my skin tones. All right, let's try that. Let's go here. Let's bring this a little more to the left. Bring this a little more to the right. Okay. All right, and then let's go to the chromaticity. Bring that up a bit. Okay. Um, let's see. Chromaticity as it goes to lightness. Let's bring up the bright purples a bit. There we go. Maybe lower the, the dark ones a bit. No, no, let's leave that where it was. Okay, so let's make that snapshot two. All right, so snapshot one, snapshot two, snapshot one, snapshot two. Mm, I like this one better. Although, let's see. Yeah, but let's undo a little bit of the skin tone protection. All right, if we do none of it. Oh, I see what's going on here. It's because it's red and skin tones. All right. So maybe if we do somewhere about here, we've got a pretty good picture. All right, let's go with this. So this will be snapshot three, which is the one I'm happy with. All right. So now let's do let's do uh, the way I normally make my black and whites. So we go to the um, color. Oops, the color tab. And we drop here to, oh, well first, sorry, before I do that, let's do a save and we'll do one JPEG. Uh, let's see, we'll put it in the processing key. Now nah, we'll do it here. Okay, we'll do one JPEG. And we'll do, hmm. I'm just looking at the reds from the background here. It's pretty intense, but that's okay. And, well, I guess, I guess I could, let me go back over here. Let me go to lab space. Let's see, chromaticity respect to hue. Let's see. So let's go. It says hold control. There we go. Alright, so let's. That's a little better. Alright, so let's go back to color. Let's go to. Alright, let me save this JPEG again. Oops, I'm doing the Q because that's what I'm used to doing. This will be color fixed. And we'll do um, we'll do our tiff. Let me just take a look at something really fast. Okay, all right. Uh, we'll do our tiff. Okay, so that's going. Okay. All right, so that's done. All right. So we go to black and white. Right, so the first mode is desaturation, and I tend to not do desaturation. I tend to do the channel mixer because that's closer to what I used to do in Photoshop, and that lets me um, mess with the um, colors. Um, let's see, portrait. Hmm, portrait's not too bad. Um, let's see, high contrast. Mm, that's okay. Uh, panchromatic. Just taking a look at some of these different ones. I usually don't. Nah. All right. 
So let's go to normal contrast. And let's try, let's see, a blue filter would make the reds really dark. That's eh. A uh, red filter would make them really light. Well, it does make her pop a lot more. So right now I'm liking red. Right now red is something I'm appreciating. Let's see, red, yellow, yellow, green, yellow, green, blue, green, blue, and purple. So purple versus red. Purple, red. I think I like red better. So we'll go with the red filter. All right. And we will do um, all right. So I'll take a look at black and white film, the before curve, and I usually just make it just a little more contrasty. Okay, it's not too bad. And then for the after curve, that's when I potentially go a little super crazy on the on the curve. Let's see. So for the best for this, so normally I do something like a pretty dramatic S, but that does not make this look very appealing at all. So if I do it just a very small S. Now this curtain is kind of distracting me a bit um, from the face. Let's see. Well, let me see. Let me see. Let me try a stronger before curve. See if that helps with anything. No, that's not good at all. I think because I've, because of um, going a little crazy on her face, it kind of um, makes this not quite. Hmm. Well, let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. So if we do this, if we go here. Kind of make sure that the mids. All right, it's not bad. Do let's see here. I think I'm gonna have to crop this photo because that white over there is just driving bananas. All right, so if I do that. All right, it's not the absolute best photo ever for black and white, but it's actually not too bad, especially cropped. So this will be uh, so this will be um, black and white JPEG, black and white. All right, so now let's go back. So let's go back to snapshot three. All right, now, another way you could do this in raw therapy um, is leave it in color and then turn on film simulation and then go to black and white and pick your favorite black and white film. So usually when I was doing black and white, I would do a Fuji Neopan. Let's see how this looks. Or an Ilford, actually Ilford Deltas is what I use the most. Ilford Delta 400. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. The cool thing here is you can kind of make it a not quite black and white if you mess with the filter, right? So that's all the way color. That's all the way black and white. And you can kind of go like right there and have like this desaturation effect. But anyway, so that's not a bad. It's not a bad picture at all. Um. And this is not as quite as distracting, so we can do that. Ilford, Ilford 400, and uh, we could come back a step. 
Let's see, we could change it to a different one. Let's go back to here. Um, we could try a Kodak. T-Max 400, I've used that one before too. That one I don't quite like as much. Um, let's see. An Agfa. I've never used Agfa. No, I don't like how that looks. I'll try one more. Let's see. So I've used this one a lot. Let's see what the 800 does. Hmm. It's okay. I think I've got a couple decent choices at this point. So if I go here to Digicam, uh, I usually make a separate JPEG folder, and I forgot to do that. JPEG, JPEGs, the mess. All right, so let's pull these in, even though the TIFF is not JPEG. And let's do a quick comparison then. So we'll put these on the light table. All right, so here's the one that I made. No, here's the Ilford Delta, right? Here's the one that I did. Okay, so you can see Where's the, uh, all right, if I zoom this in, okay, so they're already broken, so if I zoom this one in, zoom this one in, so this one's the Ilford Delta, this one's the one that I made, uh, that's 60%, so this one needs to go a little bit more to be the same, there we go, um, so you can see that this one has more of a, at least the way I happen to create it, has a bit more of a grainy look, uh, which may or may not be more pleasing, um, depending on what it is you're looking for. Um, I this one's definitely a bit more contrasty, and I I think I think I like this one better. Let's go back to um, here. And here. Yeah, I just I just really like the the way that this one ended up a, just a little more contrasty than this one. And of course, that's kind of the tough thing about what I'm trying to do here, which is that um, it's it's totally going to be a matter of eye of the beholder, and you never really know um, what someone else is going to like better. Like My wife might like this one better. Um, my mother-in-law might like this one better. Who knows? And just for comparison purposes, here's the uh, color one that we created. It's not too bad. All right. So in the next episode, I'm going to load this TIFF into GIMP and use GAMIC or GAMIC. I'm not sure how it's pronounced to create a black and white and see how that goes. See you next time.